What's up, everybody? We're back once again. Here we are. I'm Coach T. It's Joach Jacks. Coach Jacks always making fun of people, getting us in trouble. We appreciate all the feedback you've given us on 757 University. Our first podcast was last week. It was a great success. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your views. Keep going to the website. Keep commenting. Keep contacting us. Keep sending us emails, and we'll definitely get to your topics as soon as possible. As promised on last week's show, we're going to be jumping right into our area top 10 here in the 757. The high school football season is literally just seven days away, Coach. So Can't right now, we're going to jump into our top 10. We're going to start off with a 10th ranked team, a team that had a good season last year, won 11 games, found themselves, I believe it was in the state semifinals, but they lost about 80% of their offense, Coach. They lost quarterback E.J. Fajan. Yes, I'm talking about Northview High School in Norfolk, Virginia, the Northview Pilots, Coach Roosevelt Cotton. They lost their quarterback. What do you think about when a team loses a large chunk of their offense and loses their quarterback? How does that affect them going into the next season? Well, first of all, the Norview program, they had a really great season last year. Surprised a lot of people. Great quarterback play. Yep. They had a lot of guys that had been there, so they're used to the system. My whole thing is when you lose that quarterback, unless that you had a guy that's been there, that hurts, that hurts a lot. I'm, take, I'm taking two wins. Now, I think they should still be a decent team to be the contend, especially oh, playing in the Eastern District. They're going to win eight or nine games yeah, in the district. It, it's kind of like that Eastern District thing where if you have a decent defense, you got a decent running game, you can throw the ball a little bit, you can be able to compete in that district mm-hmm. uh, because it's a little more top-heavy than some of the other districts. So, you know, I think they can probably get six, maybe seven wins, but some of their quality wins are not going to be as good because some of the teams on the schedule is not going to be as good. So, drop them a little bit in the rankings, but I do see them having a bright future in this season. Oh, yeah. They're going to win eight or nine games. They're going to be right there competing with Lake Taylor and teams like that in the district. Moving on to number nine, we're going to go with a school out of Suffolk, Virginia, a school that's really been on the rise the last couple years, Coach, a school that won ten games for the first time in their program history last year, and that's going to be Kingsport High School, the Bulldogs, the triple option running team out of Suffolk. They got a great electric tailback in Deshaun Weatherington. We'll talk about him a little bit later on the show. Mm -hmm. But... What they have been kind of a victim of is the 4A school in the Southeastern District with the Oscar Smiths and Western branches of the world always falling ahead of them. However, last season, Coach, not only did they compete well against Oscar Smith, but they beat Western Branch, and they beat Grassfield, another 6A school in the district, and found themselves knocking on the door of the state semis until losing to Lake Taylor in a game in which Weatherington was not able to play because he was injured. How do you see their season shaping up, and do you see them climbing up from number nine and possibly ending up in our top five by midseason form? Absolutely. First of all, shout out to Coach Jones. He's been getting Coach that Jones. program. Coach Jones. Look, that he program. Man. I remember that program. They were winning three or four games. I remember when they weren't winning they anything. Didn't win anything. Coach Jones came in there. Gene Tech alone came there. They got a real strong basis. They run the football. Yes, they do. This year, I think... Solid defense. I Coach mean, Waddell out there Coach running Waddell. the defense. Deep Creek, shout out. Uh, he's a homer. Hey, uh, I just so, got to say, Coach uh, Waddell, man. Coach well, basically, Waddell. what I'm going to say is, like, we got these guys kind of low on the list. I got, they got a lot of potential for these guys. Oh, yeah. They're low on the list now, but I got a feeling they're going to climb quickly. Incoming quarterback, Ryan Cluck. Yes. One of my guys. One um, of my guys. I've known him since he was 12 years old. I really think that incoming quarterback makes a difference. You know, I think they'd be able to push the ball down the field a little bit more. Mm-hmm. They'd be able to open up the running game because I think that's the one thing that's missing from their team is, you know, sometimes with that, that option, with the option scheme, if you kind of get behind the chains a little bit, you can't catch up. You can't catch up. So you need to push the ball down the field, maybe pick up the tempo and the pace of the game some so they can be able to get more possessions in the game. I think that they can really jump on this list like exponentially in the next few weeks. Just teach Most them. definitely. I think we agree on that. If they can if they can push the ball down the field, you know, Ryan can complete some passes and stretch teams vertically and make it where they can't play them dishonestly on defense then I believe this team could easily find their way into our top five by the end of September, early October, and definitely compete right alongside Lake Taylor for that 4A championship. Moving up the list, the next team that we're going to be talking about, another 4A school that's going to be competing for that championship as well, is a Peninsula School coach. That's right, we've got a Peninsula School in here. The Heritage Hurricanes out of Newport News. Heritage is always right there with Kingsport, chasing Lake Taylor, nipping at their heels. Heritage is going to win 9 or 10 games every year. They have the talent. They have the structure. They have the system. Shout out to Coach Massenberg. He's turned that program around in the last four or five years. It started off, he had a great running back, and he built around him, Khalil Abdullah. He's now at James Madison University running the ball. Um, 
He started with him, and now he's turned that program into a system where it's not just built around one guy, but literally their team every year on both sides of the ball competes well. I look forward to them to be right there with Kickatan and Hampton and Phoebus competing for that Peninsula District title. But as far as the 4A schools go, they're probably going to be third in the area behind Lake Taylor and Kings Fort competing for that 4A championship. Would you agree, Coach? I agree. Uh, see, the thing about the thing I like about Heritage, they're built the right way. They always have a really good. They always have a dynamic kick return. They, they they get a lot of hidden yards in the in the kicking game. So they run the ball well. They run the ball well. They, they play, play deep, physical, deep, fast defense. defense. Now they have lost a lot from this last year, attrition through graduation. Mm -hmm. So you know they got to got to reload. So they may start off slow. But I think that, you know, the Peninsula District is not as hard as it used to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, the schedule might be a little soft early on. They're going to have a, a couple of tough tests against Phoebus and Hampton. And, you know, uh, Bethel's coming up. They got a new coach. So, you know, we got What size are always going to play? You know, like, it's going to just some question marks over there in Peninsula District right now until we start getting into the games because there's such turnover over there. we got to see how everybody shakes out. But, you know, I always think that great coaching always lends to success at the high school level. So I don't think they're going to have a significant drop-off. So I think that they... They're kind of high here. They could have been lower, but, you know, I just think there's a couple of question marks that I think that we should be able to look out for, especially with, you know, a lot of new players coming on this year. I like that. The next thing we're going to talk about is our first beach team on the list. Um, it's also our first 6A school, you know, the big boys. They play in 6A. Yeah. That's just what they like to tell you. Um, Cox High School out of Virginia Beach. Um, Coach Tachelski, they always do a great job out there running the football, playing fundamentally sound. They got a great quarterback, Cole Johnson, big, tall, physical specimen, uh, runs the offense very well. He's highly talented, highly recruited. Um, a lot of times I think Cox kind of falls through the cracks because when you think Virginia Beach, you think Beach District, the first thing you think of is Ocean Lakes. The next thing you think of is Salem. But a lot of times Cox falls through the cracks. The last couple seasons, Coach, they've produced 7-3, 8-2 seasons and have been right there in the playoff mix. And I see them... Not jumping too high, not falling too low, but staying consistent the way they always do and staying right there in that level of, you know, four to seven in the top ten in the area. Would you agree? Yeah, see, the thing about Cox is they're kind of in that beach district purgatory where it's just so top heavy because you got Ocean Lakes, which, you know, they're one of the better teams in the, in the area, not alone in the district. Then you got Salem, who's always competing at a high level. So those are two games that you they haven't been winning have consistently a time. over the last few years, you know, especially over the last five years, they haven't won that game at all. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're talking about two wins now. Do you lose that game against a rival that you should win? Right. Do you, do you lose to a, you lose to a Lance, to Lance Town? Lance do you lose to a right. Bayside, one of the up-and-coming right. schools with, with a lot of talent on it? Do you lose to one of them and find yourself sitting at 7-3 and three and maybe third or fourth in the district? Or do you stay consistent, finish a solid 8-2, and two, and finish in the places where you should seeing you at? And there's a lot to be seen in the Beach District this year because there are teams like Lance Town and Bayside, and we'll get to that later, that, you know, should not, you know, have records like they had last year. They yeah. should win more games than they won last year. There's a lot of close games that were lost last year in multiple districts by multiple teams, and we're going to talk about that shortly. The next team on our list coming in at number six is going to be Salem High School, another 5A school. Salem, multiple times in the last few seasons, have been right there knocking on the door of a state title in 5A, only to fall short. Uh, Coach Robert Jackson does a great job with them. Shout out to Coach Jack Greenhouse. Uh, Norcom alum, you know, Co you know, Coach Jack's got a shot at his Norcom alum. You know, what I'm you know, to. Coach Jackson's done an excellent job with Salem. They have been producing talent at the high level. You know, Bucky Hodges, tight end right now at Virginia Tech, was yep. a quarterback there for multiple seasons. They've produ been producing talent for a long time. And is this the year that Salem not necessarily jumps Ocean Lakes in the district, but is this the year that Salem? knocks the door down, conquers the Giant, and walks away with a state championship in 5A. This is going to be the last year with the Butts brothers, mm -hmm. um, the running back tandem that they have there, Malik Butts and his brother, the great athletes, some of the top seniors in the area. Is this going to be the year, their senior year, where Salem knocks the door down and comes home with a ring, Coach? What do you think? 5A is tough. It is tough. Because, you know, being that there's not a whole lot of 5A schools here, you kind of get, uh, it's not a total cakewalk, but it's kind of kind of an easy road to get to a really late playoff run. But then you start to get really top heavy as you start to go on. So, I don't know, this may be their year. I mean, it's, I'm still waiting to see. Uh, they had a little bit of turnover. But um, they're always a program that's consistently wearing mm -hmm. seven, eight games. They're kind of stuck in that same 
uh, like Cox mode where you know you get top dog in Ocean Lakes and then everybody else trying to buy for second place and third place. The only thing is they have an advantage because they don't have to face them again in the six A playoff. That's right. They're not going to see Ocean Lakes come play all times. And in the five A, you, you have your your LC Bird. They're you know a great perennial power. They have a lot of talent up there. The Skyhawks. You have Stonebridge, their perennial power. We always see them come no, late November and December, make a run in the playoffs. You have your Meadowbrook teams up around Richmond. There's 5A schools that we don't get a chance to see around here in the Tower tough. area that are tough football teams Pretty and tough. good football teams. And Salem and even last year, Norview, found themselves matching up against those teams. So, me personally, I'm going to shout it out on 757 University. I'm going to say that the 5A state championship. I'm not going to say Salem. I'm not going to make that guarantee. But I'm going to say that the 5A state championship comes from right here in the 757. That this year, the 757 takes home the 5A state title. And we're going to get to why I think that in a few minutes, Coach. The next team that we have, this is the beginning of our top five, is going to be a Division VI school out of Chesapeake, Virginia. That's going to be the Western Branch Bruins. Um, Western Branch, Coach Greg Gibson, they always have a solid running game. They run the ball very, very well. They play very aggressive defense. They have a highly recruited linebacker this year, Coach Armand Jones. Great physical specimen, solid at the point of attack, comes downhill, makes contact. They also have a transferred in quarterback from Great Bridge. And this young man, Jacob Wilson, this young man brings a new element to the Western Branch offense that hasn't been there, folks, in the last couple of seasons. We've seen Western Branch run the ball very, very well over the last couple of seasons. A few years ago, they had Josh Mariner. He led the area in rushing. However, when it comes playoff time, the inability to throw the football and get the ball down the field in big chunks hurt them. This year, they have a kid, Jacob Wilson, going to, I believe it is, Bucknell College. Um, had about 25 offers, Coach, as a quarterback. This young man can throw the football. And when it comes time that they need to convert and throw the football, I believe this year they're going to be able to do it. And that's why they're in the top five. Yeah, well, you know that Western Branch is going to historically have those type of teams. They're going to have pretty good defense. You know, they got a new defense coordinator, Malik Wilson, taking over this year. You should see what type of scheme they're going to put in. Put He's in from there. Norfolk, right? He's from Norfolk. Okay. Shout He's out Norfolk. to Norfolk again. Um, interesting to see what type of dynamic they're going to have <clears throat> Excuse me, with the, with the new faces plus with the new coordinator and the new scheme okay. to see how they actually get everything going to see if the defense remains one of those better ones because you can't give up a lot of you can't give up a lot of yards in the that's what hurt them last year. They're running a lot of man to man coverage. Yeah, they get a lot facing of yards. Oscar Smith, teams are gonna attack you vertically down the field and you're getting lack of a better term, you're getting torched. You're getting torched down the field. Uh, also I think the special teams left something to be desired last year. They gave up a lot of points uh, in, the, in the kicking game. Yeah, I remember the Indian River game. Indian, Indian River game changed was, the game by running a kickoff back right after Western Branch had run one back themselves. Right, so defense is going to be key for them because it's a field position game where you run that scheme that they run. You know, they mm -hmm. run more of that option gear type scheme. So what you're going to have to do is make sure that you have longer fields for your game because you're going to have to be able to hold the ball to kill the clock. Mm -hmm. Because they're still not going to have that type of philosophy where they're going to throw the ball down the field a lot. Still want to run football. The, the next team on our list, and this might cause some controversy, Coach. This, this might cause some, some back and forth is, you know, we have Lake Taylor ranked fourth. Um, you know, a lot of people around here are touting Lake Taylor to win on the state championship. I believe they're probably going to win on the state championship. I'm not going to take nothing away from them. I do. But just because you were the best team in 4A in the state doesn't mean you're the best team, doesn't mean you're the best team in 757. No. And anybody that wants to sit down with me and say that Lake Taylor is better than Ocean Lakes or Lake Taylor is better than Oscar Smith, you know, We've seen that play out on uh, the film. Yeah, we, you know, we, we saw a great Lake Taylor team that I believe won the state title that year play against Oscar Smith on national television. What, two years ago? And it was, I believe, three years three ago years now, ago. Coach, and lose the game. So Lake Taylor's a great football team, not taking nothing away from them. But I can't put them above some of the larger schools in our area. We happen to be in a unique situation where we have six five, four, and even three A schools here in the 757. So yes, I believe Lake Taylor is the best four A school in the state. Yeah. But right That's now, true. I believe they're only the fourth ranked school in the 757. They have great players, Wayne Davis, Keontae Burton, um, great players that are going to Division One, great football team. Mike Carney, big man anchoring the offensive line. They get a great football team. But am I gonna put them at the one and two slot um, and make them jump teams like Oscar Smith at Ocean Lakes? No, I can't do that. Well. Let's be serious. I don't see, because it's the reason why Oscar Smith 
and Ocean Lakes aren't lower on the countdown because I don't think it's a whole lot of teams that can beat that team. No. Teams here. no. So even on a level playing field, I mean, we've seen it happen before when they had the ESPN Spectacular with Ocker Smith and Lake Taylor. We see how that how that worked out. Ocker Smith didn't even really put out much of a show as far as their offense. They just threw a lot of nine rounds. And ran the football. Ran the football. There wasn't too much to it. wasn't a whole lot of imagination because, I mean, it's not fair because you're talking about the D6 and D4. That's why they don't play each other. Right. We're talking about two schools with yeah. entirely different talent pools, entirely different right. roles. So, you know, I think that if they played each other, I think it would be a decent matchup this year. They yeah, play it, it, good. This, that, we'll get to that in a minute, Coach. What we're saying, a lot of people have been talking about in the community that Oscar Smith this year is not going to be as good as they've been in the last couple of seasons. I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but... My philosophy is this, and me and Coach Jackson talked about this multiple times off the air. The top dog is the top dog until you beat him. And Oscar Smith has not lost a district game in 11 years. So until somebody beats them in the regular season, I cannot put anybody, especially in their district, or in a lower class, as in 5A, 6A, 4, lower class than them, above them in a top 10, until I see them lose, Coach. I'm, I'm with you because like until you beat the beast, I'm picking them every time. You still the beast. Look, I'm not. Look, I'm not. I'm not fight. I'm not gonna bet against Mike Tyson until he get knocked out. Right. Place. And you look. You, your your big brother is your big brother until you beat him. Yeah. Until you outrun him. Until, until you beat him in a game of twenty one. Until your big brother is your big brother. And now it's not even close most of the time. Normally it's not. But this is a great segue, Coach. Going into our number three ranked team, hmm. the team that many people believe, including me. It is the number one team that has a shot. A shot. Not making no guarantees here. I made a guarantee earlier about guarantee. 5A state championship coming from 7 by 7 This team is the reason I'm making that guarantee. This could be the team that knocks off Oscar Smith. That's Indian River High School, the third ranked team on our countdown out of Chesapeake, Virginia. Indian River has a number of players that are going Division One this year. Um, the most touted one is middle linebacker Jaquan Uly going to Alabama. Um, we know what kind of athlete he is. We know what kind of you know fierce ferocity he brings on defense, um, especially in the run defense as well as you know playing sideline to sideline. Um, he now has a partner in crime this year that is going to Virginia Tech. It's Devonte Beckett. Um, Beckett brings similar things to the table as Uly, but also other things as well. Um, young man really jumps out on film. He's a tremendous athlete. Um, you don't go play linebacker at Virginia Tech for Bud Foster just off your looks. You know, you go for a reason. The linebackers that have played up there, the names speak for themselves. So, these two young men have the ability to anchor that defense along with Devon Hunter, who's a highly talented recruit back there at free safety and also playing wide receiver. Um, at the quarterback position, you got Tyree Gibbons Wilson. He's got multiple colleges looking at him right now. One of the top ranked dual threat quarterbacks in our area. This team is built to win and win this year. And if there's going to be a team and going to be a time that could possibly leapfrog Oscar Smith and possibly beat them head to head, I believe it is this Indian River team. Um, what do you think? Well, I, I totally agree with you on that, Five You know, I told you, I, I told the guy that Indian River was in Five Eight, so that's my fault for that thing. So, you know, what's not to like about this team? Great defense. Running football, mobile quarterback, mobile quarterback, tough. The only thing I can probably say that may, you know, be a, maybe a little bit, that may be a problem for me is like last year down the stretch is, you know, Tyree was a little last day to go with the football, a little bit of turnovers, you know, negative plays, stuff like that. If he can clean up those negative plays and be able to make sure that he manages the game well, you know, not throwing interceptions, you know, making sure that he doesn't, you know, make that big mistake to take them out of position to be able to score points. I think they have a really good shot at being like Smith this year. I bet they do too. And I, this will probably be the best shot they're going to have because, you know, after this year, you know, you know, Oscar Smith's going to reload. They're graduating so, a lot of talent. Gonna, Oscar you, Smith always reloads. And they got a lot of young players on Oscar Smith's team, right. so you got to be able to get them while they're down. So, um, you know, I, I think that this might be a year where this, they can this, get it this done. This might be a year where they get it done. However, might be to get it done. because it hasn't happened yet, there's a reason why they we're at number three. And we haven't talked about one and two yet. Exactly. Oscar Smith is still the best team in Chesapeake until somebody beats him. Why are we even talking and, about And the best team in Southeast District. Why are we even talking about them? So we don't even, we don't even talk about them. Y'all know about Oscar Smith. Y'all y'all know Come about on. the blue and gold beast. Really? Right number two right now at our countdown. Two. The six A 
School out of Chesapeake, the Oscar Smith Tigers, Coach Richard Morgan, um, I believe going into his 15th season. 15th uh, year. I believe it's his 15th season. Um, multiple Listen, state championships. This is the problem I have with a lot of these people now. Because now they're saying that Oscar Smith's having a down year. And they probably win nine games. Right. How you're, you having a down year you win nine games? Your down year is nine and one. What measuring stick are you measuring with? Is, like, look, is this a different measuring what stick? Is, what is happening is, Coach, it's just like, it's just like in the NFL and in college. They're becoming a victim Stop of their it. own success because Stop it. you're so dominant and so good for so long. Now, if you don't go out and win a state championship, or if you don't beat everybody by 35, or if you don't go 10 and 0 in the district, you're having a down year. Now, speaking of beating folks by 35, <laughs> speaking of winning a state championship, the number one ranked team in our countdown, currently the defending 6A state champion. Um, the closest game they played was the state title, but last year beat Oscar Smith head to head. I believe it was 49 to 49 to 28. 28. 40, 28 points. 49 to 28 is the Ocean Lakes Dolphins out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, shout out to Coach Chris Cott and his staff and the excellent job that they do. Um, Ocean Lakes has a number of recruits. It would take us half the day on this broadcast to tell you about all of them. You know, um, even the ones that are not seniors, such as Eric Crosby, he's being looked at real hard right now by, I believe, Tennessee, SEC mm -hmm. school. Um, they have the number one ranked recruit in the state. Mm -hmm. They have the number one ranked defensive back in the country and the sixth ranked recruit overall in the country, the Florida State commit, Levante Taylor, leading and spearheading that team on defense at defensive back. Um, great football team, well coached team. We, we could be here all day. Talking about days, you know, their, their second unit could probably go 7 3, let's call it what it is. I think Ocean Lacey probably beat you on. <laughs> I'm serious, like they got some guys. Coach Chawan is Division Two. You can't. Get I'm it. saying Ocean Lake. Okay, give him a run. You're not gonna beat Chawan. Maybe okay. a D maybe Christopher Newport. Okay, maybe a D three school. How about Lincoln? They could probably beat Lincoln. I don't know where Lincoln is. Lincoln's in Pennsylvania. Okay, they they could probably beat Gettysburg College or something. They, they might could beat oh. a D three school. They probably could. They might could. But like they got kids that's going to the Pac twelve from from, you, from here. Exactly. When they come all the way across the country to find you, Jason Lewis, the tailback they had last year, turning here to Arizona State. What's Ridiculous. up, Jason? Glad to hear you're doing well, man. Ridiculous. Listen, that's about all we have time for today on seven five seven university. We just want to run down our top ten. Um, some of the teams to keep your eye on, um, kinda on the outside looking in. Um Kickatan, um, always have a tough team over there in the peninsula. They went from 6A to 5A this season. So keep your eyes on them to compete in that top heavy 5A with the Indian Rivers and the Salem's and the Norview. Also keep your eye out for Grassfield. Um, Grassfield's a tough football team. Grassfield could be a sleeper this year. Coach Asprey always has those kids ready to play. And finally, the last team I want to talk about. Lafayette. You know what it is, Lafayette. You know what it is. Hey. They have moved from 3A to 4A. And now in the playoffs, they will have an opportunity to compete with some of the 757 schools and test their mettle against some of the best of the best here in the state of Virginia. They're going to be a top three seed in the 4A playoffs. My boy, what you said? You heard it here first. Okay, top four seed in the 4A playoffs. Y'all heard it. Lafayette will be a top four seed in the 4A playoffs. I don't, know, even number two. I don't know if Lake Taylor and Heritage and, and those teams going to agree. They're going to play them. I understand that. They're going to play them. But they're going to play them eventually. <laughs> They go play them eventually. We'll see. I would love to see them line up against Kings Fork and watch Triple Option go up against Triple Option. Um, that's all we have time for today, folks. We want to give you our quick rundown, talk about some of the better players in the area, and talk about the top teams in the area. Look forward to talking with you next week. As always, stay tuned. Continue to visit our site, 757university.com. Continue to contact us. Email us. Let us know what you want to hear us talk about. Let us know what you want to hear us break down. We look forward to seeing you again, same time, same channel, right here at 757university.com. Come check us out. As always, I'm Coach T. I'm Coach Jackson. And it ain't where you're at. It's where you're from. 757, boys. Y'all holla. Let's get it.